John, how much did a uh, finances and maybe a lack of desire to, to pay a buyout factor into this decision? None, Chris. None. I mean, buyouts are a part of college football in 2021. Okay, that's just that's that's part of the environment of college football. It had no impact whatsoever. Strictly football. It's, this is strictly football. Anish? Um, you, you said that Coach Bader would be back for next season, but with five out of the last six seasons of San Diego, it's less than 500. Do you think that next year is going to be his make or break year for bringing it back in 2023? You know, we do every we do everything year to year here, and that's how we've always that's how we've always operated. Um, I will tell you that when we extended Coach Bayers three years ago, that extension goes beyond 2022. Again, it's my desire. That's why I'm going to do everything I can to support this program so that he's our coach and we have the success that we all covet. Thank you. We'll go to Steve. John, this question I've just been hanging out there all season long about whether or not Dino will be back right. for next year. And you mentioned you wanted to see improvement and progress. At what point did you make the decision? Was it, was it going into the bye week at five and four? You felt like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable with this. I've seen enough. I mean, can you give us a, an idea of the timeline in your head when you felt like, all right, I've, I've seen what I need to see? Steve, I, I, there, there wasn't like, okay, a defining moment. It was just when you see the growth that we had, you see the success that we had in certain areas of our play, the change that we made in our offensive philosophy, right, which is, you know, it was a dramatic change, but it was the right change. Because it gave us the best chance to win, right? So when you see all that, and again, when you have 18 of 22 starters potentially coming back, we're a really young team. That it was it was gradual, but I came to that conclusion over a period of the entire season. So I'm never going to make a knee-jerk reaction or decision. I'm not going to make decisions in an emotional moment, because more often than not, if you do, you'll make the wrong decision one way or the other. So this is you know this is something that. You know, I evaluated the program starting with really with spring practice. Thank you. Welcome, Tommy Slater. Hey, John. Good, good morning. Time. How are you? Uh, do you think you still would have expected to see some coaching movement changes that we've seen over the last day had the sixth win happened against Pitt? You know, Coach, you know, we, talk, we talked about the you know, 2022 season. We started that a couple weeks ago. And, and the whole goal is always to get better. You can never be complacent. The decisions are ultimately his, okay? And I want to stress that. I don't dictate to any of our coaches decisions they make in terms of their staff. What we, what we do talk about is like, how do we get better? And if you need to make changes on your staff to get better, then I'm going to leave it to that coach to do it. Thank you. We'll go to Nate McPherson. John, did, did you and Dino alter the contract at any point to maybe allow yourself to be more aggressive, attracting some assistant coaching candidates, or help you out on the back end of the deal? Did you make any? Yeah, changes? Nate, I'm, I'm not going to get into any contractual terms, you know, whatsoever. You know, but listen, we, we've invested in this program over the past five years, and we've done it with the support of the chancellor. We've done it with the support of the board, and we're going to continue to invest in it. Chris, um, John, did you? Recruiting class for next year doesn't look on paper great to us, maybe because coaching staff has faced this perception all season. Um, it'll face a perception heading into next season too. How concerned are you with, with recruiting and the possibility that there's like a two year sort of talent gap because there's been coaching questions? Well, I think Chris, you know, number one, the recruiting class, you know, it's, it's not over yet. Right, we have the early signing period in February, then we have the transfer portal. And we, we need to use the portal to our advantage. Um, and you know, um, the, you know, the ratings and all that stuff, um, this, is, this has never been a program that attra that's attracted you know, you know, high four-star, five-star recruits. This has always been a program that's developed players. And I think you've seen that we've been able to do that, right? You see the three guys who went to the NFL from the secondary. You know, I think Trill might have been a four star, but if he was a three star, Cisco was, you know, was a three star, right? You look at Sean Tucker, you look at what he's become, right? He came in as a three star, he's a five star now. So part of what we need to do is, to, is develop players. Um, that's incredibly important. And we do need, and I want, we need to invest in our recruiting staff and have more people in our recruiting department. 
and I'm going to need our alumni, our football alumni, to support that effort. Is there something you can do quickly enough to impact next year? Yes, yes, with their support. Thank you. We'll go to Dan Corcoran. John, you spoke about the fact that, you know, this coaching staff, how important it is in recruiting and everything. With the consistent coaching changes from year to year, how do you address that with Dino, that there's been coaches coming in and out since he's been here? And you also spoke about the importance of special teams and having a leader there as well moving forward. Yeah, I think, again, the special teams is an area that, we'll, that he will address, that will address as a program. You're always, you know, you're, you're almost always going to have change in your coaching staff. And when you have guys who leave, who can you know, grow their career by going to different places, and that's part of it. Um, I think, again, retaining coaches like Coach Smith was really, really important to us. Um, and as Coach said last night, his release, you know, the remainder of the staff, uh, we'll fill that out, we'll fill that out quickly. Thanks, John. We'll go to Connor Smith.